Out of all the countries in the world, why did you choose India to settle as a Netherlands foreigner? Hi, my name is Ivana and I've been living here in Bangalore for almost three years now. The question that I just mentioned is something that I get a lot. Even after dedicating a whole TED talk to this topic and a whole separate video where I thought I had explained enough about my reasons. Apparently there's still some confusion as to why I specifically chose India over all the other countries in the world. Well, in this video, we're getting into that question. I actually did my homework for this because I have thought about it obviously, but not super, super explicitly. So I wrote down my criteria from the start. If you haven't watched the previous video where I explained why I left the Netherlands, I have linked it down in the description for you. But in short, it was because I wanted to live in a tropical climate. So obviously that was my criteria number one. Then criteria number two, I am checking my, my notes here, was English language. Criteria number three was the size of the country or the diversity of the country. Criteria number Number four was the distance to the Netherlands and criteria number five was the quality of life. I'm going to go through all these criteria individually and explain why India came out at the top of each and every criteria. But first I want to ask you a question and that is to comment down below which of these criteria you find the most fascinating. But you can also do that at the end of the video, obviously. Criterion number one, tropical climate, which was the most important reason for me because it was the reason why I wanted to leave the Netherlands in the first place. Applying this criterion on the world map, obviously it eliminates a lot of fantastic countries like for instance Canada, Japan or Korea because they are simply too cold for me. Obviously this does leave a lot of other amazing countries like for instance Australia, US, Bali, Spain, Italy which are also usually quite warm in the winter but the second criterion eliminated a lot of them as well which was English language. I have been self-employed for the last five years which is not a big issue but obviously I do always have a backup plan in the back of my head, especially now during Corona. I think a lot of people who work for themselves have experienced how risky it can be. I at least want to have the opportunity that I can take up a job if you know my own business doesn't generate enough revenue or profits. This is also one of the reasons why I first worked in the corporate world for six years after I left college. And then with all that working experience, started my own company. If everything else fails, I still have six years corporate life experience and also five years of my own business experience in order to find a job. However, that doesn't really work if you are living in a country where you have to speak a different language than English. So for instance, in France, you have to speak French if you want to find a job there, or even if you want to work with clients over there. The same goes for Spain and the same goes for Italy. Italy is my second favorite country in the world, so I have definitely considered it. But in order for me to live and work in Italy, I would have to speak Italian. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Italian and I would love to learn it at one point in my life. But I did think that moving to a different country, leaving everything that I had behind and then still having to learn a new language was a bit too much to ask. <laughs> so applying the second criterion of English speaking country eliminated pretty much the whole of South America because it's predominantly Spanish speaking countries and obviously in Brazil they speak Portuguese but that that was just too much for me. That leaves us with still quite a lot of countries, like for instance, Hong Kong, Australia, or even the south of the US. So why did I choose India? Well, we're gonna apply another criterion that was important to me, criterion number three, the size or the diversity of the country. Now I travel a lot for work. Obviously I make travel videos here, but I also consult businesses in an international context. So for me to move to a small island, like for instance, Bali or Curaçao, would just not be practical at all. Because first of all, you have to constantly fly in and out of the island if you want to go anywhere. What I also realized while contemplating to leave the Netherlands was that I didn't constantly want to have to take a flight 
to go to a beautiful destination because I wasn't happy with the place that I was living in. So the third criterion of diversity in the size of the country was also pretty significant because I just wanted to be like in a city or in a place where I would be happy exploring and really, really enjoy my daily life. Hong Kong would have definitely been one of those places. A lot of you guys also mentioned Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, those would also definitely have been interesting. Was it not that Singapore, I feel, is still quite too small for me? Malaysia, I've been there, but I didn't feel like truly a connection with the country. Thailand is mostly Thai spoken. People in Thailand who speak English are usually working in the tourism industry. So if you wander outside of the tourism industry, the Thai language becomes quite important. So that's why Thailand wasn't a good fit for me either. But this does leave us with some other pretty amazing countries like Australia, Hong Kong, which would have been a very easy choice for me because my brother already has lived there for more than eight years. We also still have the US in the running. I absolutely love LA. However, for me, there was a fourth criterion, which was also very, very important and immediately ruled out Australia. It was the distance to the Netherlands. My parents and all my friends still live in the Netherlands. I never even considered being in a country where it would take me at least 24 hours of flying and probably one or two stopovers to get back to my parents. My parents are also at a quite older age. So if anything happens to my parents or if they need my help or whatever, I just want to be there as soon as possible. So Australia was absolutely out of the question because it is just too, too far away from the Netherlands. And then there were only three options left for me, which were India, Hong Kong, or LA. To which I subliminally, I have to admit, applied the fifth criterion, quality of life. If I look at the US and I've been there and I've experienced LA life for a week, and I've done a road trip there with my brother for two weeks. LA is amazing. It's such a beautiful city near the ocean. There's so many opportunities there, but I feel the risks of living in a country like the US where a doctor's bill, like a simple checkup already costs $400 or where I can get sued for even bumping into somebody, it's just not worth it. Too much stress. <laughs> Personally, for me, the way the social system now works in the US, the way the legal system works in the US, it's just a way too risky country to live in. And I don't feel the quality of life for me over there would be higher than in the Netherlands. Then we also have Hong Kong, which is an absolutely amazing place. My brother has been having a fantastic life there for almost eight years. It would have been a lot easier for me to move to Hong Kong than to India because obviously I would have already had my brother there. I already stayed with my brother for three months when I left the Netherlands. But there are a couple of things that I realized I don't like about Hong Kong. First of all is the living and working pace. It is super high. People look so incredibly stressed. They have to work so hard to earn a decent income and then the living space is so limited. Cooking at home is quite expensive so people eat out a lot. I like to eat out but I also like to have affordable home cooking. If I'm being fair all those things would have been manageable if I wouldn't have had India as an alternative which matched all my five criteria flawlessly. So let's just go through the five criteria again and apply them to India, right? My first criterion, a tropical climate, India has it. The smarty pants who are watching this would say, not all of India is warm. That's perfectly fine. I don't have to live there. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to live in a cold place in India either, but there are plenty of all year round warm places in India where I can live, like for instance, Bangalore, where I chose to live. Then the second criterion applied on India, predominantly English speaking country. English is an official language here in India. I know it is not the official language, but just one of the official languages. However, from North India to South India, I've always been 
been able to communicate in English and I'm quite confident that if I need to find a job in India because my own business is not generating enough income for me to you know maintain my life I will definitely be able to find a job in India then the third criterion the size or the diversity of the country I mean come on this is India I have everything here from the Himalayas to the beaches to the tropical forests whatever I want I can find it in India in terms of travel so that was just very easy tick on the list <laughs> then the fourth criteria the distance to the Netherlands there are direct flights going from Bangalore to the Netherlands so if I want to and if I really need to within 12 hours I can be from my home door here at my parents home door in the Netherlands which is something that was super super important for me also what I really really like about India is that it is very very well connected to a large part of the world so Europe it's very well connected Middle East it's very well connected Asia it's very well connected obviously some places are further now than they were for me from the Netherlands like if I want to go to LA now, that would be a little bit more difficult than going from the Netherlands. But those are not the places that I visited frequently anyways. I was mostly traveling in Europe, in the Middle East or in Asia. So for me, India is perfect at the center of it all. And then number five, the quality of life. I have quite a lot of Indians, I have to say who complain that the quality of life in India is not that good because mm, the salaries are quite low compared to the rest of the world. But I feel these people really, really forget that the living expenses are also a lot lower than in the rest of the world. To give you an idea, the average salary I think in India is between 20,000 rupees up to 50,000 rupees. Please correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below. But then in a city like Bangalore, which is one of the largest cities in India, you can still have quite a good life on a salary of 20,000 rupees. Whereas for instance in the Netherlands where the average salary is 2,000 euros, you really have to account that the average rent of a home would already be 800 euros your groceries would be 200 euros so your basic expenses are already going to take up at least 1200 up to 1500 euros if you are living in the Netherlands and I'm not even talking about Amsterdam which is the most expensive city in the Netherlands so in terms of you know quality of life as costs for a living I feel India is amazing value for money and no, I'm not earning a Dutch salary here. So the people who want to come at me in the comments with that argument, please sit down. I'm not earning a Dutch salary here. But obviously there are a couple of other factors that you have to take into account when you're thinking about the quality of life and not just the living expenses. One thing I think India does really, really well is a great work family life balance. Obviously also there are people from urban areas who are gonna come at me and say like, oh, but I work 12 hours a day. Yes, that's correct. In the urban areas, it might definitely be different, but from what I have seen across India, people value family so much, a lot more than their work, that the work-life balance is a lot better than a lot of countries in the world. And I love, 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 you know, that dominant role that family plays in Indian society because I think it's a very, very healthy mindset for us as human beings who are naturally social creatures. Then something that I think India does really, really well in terms of quality of life is the medical system. What I mean by that is that there isn't necessarily a social security structure here like we have in the Netherlands with a mandatory health insurance or something like that. But the doctors are so plentiful that they are accessible even for people with the lowest incomes and I think that's something super super important. Even more important than the medical structure or the health structure I feel is this community sense that most Indians have in their DNA where they automatically feel this obligation to take care of each other. Somehow most Indians, obviously not everybody, but most Indians feel this 
social obligation to take care of the less fortunate or people from the lower income classes. A lot of people who are critical about India would then say, oh, but why are there still so many poor people or why are there still no like real minimum wages? If you are thinking those things or if you are saying those things, then you are absolutely completely forgetting that India hasn't even had independence from the British 400 years. India has been independent for barely, what, 73, 74 years now. So if you look at the development and the quality of life that most Indians have nowadays, and that they have accomplished that over the past like 70 plus years, I think that's absolutely amazing and astonishing. And I can't wait to see where India goes next. And this is actually also one of the reasons why I got super, super, super excited about India. I came here for the first time back in 2015 when Geo was just introduced. In case you don't know, pre-2015, internet was extremely expensive and extremely slow in India. And after 2015, Geo was introduced and now basically you get data with a bag of chips. So that completely transformed the country and I have seen how much impact that has made on the daily life of Indians. And also obviously, if you're living here as a foreigner, your daily life has also completely transformed. It just made me so excited to see that revolution each and every year since I've been coming here. And I, I do wanna be a part of it. It really, really makes me excited to be able to be a part of that and to be able to contribute to India in its growth. So yeah, when I applied all five criteria, India just came out on top as the country for me. Obviously, it is not a country for everybody. It is not a country that accepts foreigners easily. There are quite a lot of things that other people may not be able to accept where I don't have that much trouble with it. One is the whole, you know, women rights revolution then you also have the whole legal system transforming politics transforming but i am not into religion or politics anyways also i have met enough indian women until now to know that they will absolutely completely transform this country into a country that they want to live in and i'm happy to be a part of whatever context they create for me as a fellow woman concluding i hope it makes sense when applying all these criteria india just completely came out on top for me. It was already my favorite country in the world, but obviously I also have to think logical if I'm going to leave a very comfortable life in the Netherlands and settle in a different country. But then still India completely came out on top for me. I hope that makes sense. And still I'm very, very curious which of these criteria was the most surprising or the most fascinating for you. Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to put a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe and click the little bell icon. And then I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.